Well, here I am at the Hyatt Regency Hotel for the Fest for Beetle fans. Look at this view. That's really nice. And here's the hotel right here. Here we are inside the hotel. Okay, a little breakfast here at the Hyatt. That's what I call a view. So it's 12 o'clock. So welcome to the Fest for Beatles fans 2017. Um, we're here, but the place can be really busy today, and uh, there's activities going on all over the place, but I want to bring on our Master of Ceremonies for the entire weekend. He's been with us before, I think. Was this your first year, second year, third year? <laughs> 18th year? Jeez. <laughs> From Q104, you know my love and breakfast with Beatles guy, and afternoon drive from Q104, Ken Dashow! How many people are here for the first time? We have more first timers here than I've yes. seen in a long time last night too. Welcome to our crazy family. We're here because we love the music. Let's welcome them. We welcome you. Let's give them a hand. Welcome with open arms. And what, part of it, what, you can ask anyone here what they do, what to see, but the answer is it's like a buffet. Catch a little bit of everything if it's your first time. Catch some of the interviews, catch some music, go to the dealer room, go to the ninth floor, sing along in the lobby, go to the Apple stage to jam. Catch, get a little bit of everything, like you're going down the buffet so you'll get a sense of it, and you'll be back year after year. And God willing, so will we. Mark, thank you for putting this together. You know what we, we should do this for, because we have more newbies. Mark and Carol, you know, this is not some junky, like, you know, fast food joint. They've done this themselves. Quickly, and I emphasize quickly, tell the story of how you started this. This is a great story. Wait a second. There's a reason this is blessed, and I mean right. that. This will be the short version. Blessed. The ones who were here in 2014 at the New York City when I did the entire talk, I won't do that now. Okay, my 45 second version of it. Um, I was always a big Beatles fanatic, and I thought at the end of 1973 that somebody should do something to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Beatles' arrival in America in that future year of 1974. And I said, being a, a wide-eyed, blurry-eyed kid, I said, I'm not going to do it without their support. So, a few months later, I book a hotel all my own, the old Commodore Hotel, and uh, John is playing in Central Park, performing, not, not performing, speaking in Central Park at the first March of Dimes walkathon, and I found out where he was staying and knocked on his door. Harry Nielsen opened the door, who later became a dear friend of ours and came to many, many fests. And I said, hi, I'm Mark Lapidus. I'd like to speak to John about Beetlefest. That's exactly what he did. And somewhere I have it on a beta tape of his description of that moment. I have it for all history. Anyway, so I, eventually I sat down with John, told him my whole idea about it, and he said, quote, I'm all for it, I'm a Beatles fan too. And that moment is why we're still here. 43 years later, I never would have known that, but it was, it was John who did it. And the approval from John, and, and no one's ever gotten approval from the Beatles to do anything. Anything related, I mean, love was their idea, George's thing, but this was independent. And I think it liked me because I was a, a record store manager, so, you know, that in his mind, seven years, you know, 10 years earlier, Right. Brian was like, a record store man. You know what? I, hey, everybody, here I am with my my buddy yeah. Matthew Street. Yeah, that's the screen name. Uh, he's got street. he's got a great channel, and I love it. It's, it's named after the famous street in uh, England. He was my biggest influence in creating the channel, right I'll, here. I'll give you ten bucks later. He's like the grand poopa, right here. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. You're too kind. <laughs> Actually, no, you're, you're just kind enough. Yeah. Um, and we're having a great time here at the oh, Festival awesome. Beatles this fans. Is great. 
Um, so much to do. My mind's still racing. Who I know. I, it's, I don't know where to go, where to stop, who to see. There's so many famous figures in Beatles lore with us here today, and they're all over the place. Denny Lane's over there. Gene Cornish from The Rascals. Larry Kane from the Ron Howard film. We've got Lawrence Juber behind us. Where do I go? I don't know what I to do. I don't know. So I'm trying to like you know, get myself going so I can spend some time in the flea market. I know. It's crazy. I I mean, my two anything. sons are up there. I'm down here waiting to meet people. So i got to get up there and spend some money. And I think. Be sure to watch his channel. <laughs> He's got a great Beatles collection. He shows things all the time. Brand new, yeah, brand new. And thanks to you, I got a few subscribers now, and I'm happy to show my stuff. So. Always great to yeah. promote somebody that's yeah. into the Beatles. So uh, we'll be hanging out here oh, at yeah. the fest. Oh, yeah. I'll be here all day. I'm sure you will. And uh, it's going to be fun. I'm hoping to really meet some good people here today. Okay. They're all over. Good talking to you. <laughs> nice seeing you. Take care. Sirius XM and Ken Michaels uh, from Every Little Thing. And uh, we're talking to me, Mr. Mayo, who has the YouTube channel that everyone goes to because he is. Darren, I don't know if you know this. This guy is a, a collector extraordinaire. Oh, okay. This guy's room is just all Beatles. Very nice. Entirely Beatles. Beatles everywhere. Very, very. Cool. And you know what? He doesn't care about spending money. He just spends the money. That I don't have. That he doesn't have. He's, uh, he was, he's just a regular working class hero. And he has all this Beatles stuff. Now, I don't have all that Beatles stuff. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't want it. Well, I do want it, but I, I don't want I, to spend I have all that money. Very unorganized, cluttered house. Much to my wife's dismay, because every room has got something in it that shouldn't be there and needs to be in the space I was given, which I don't think I will fit in. It's time to build a new house. <laughs> well, that opens up another can of worms. Okay. Would you guys like to do a plugs or anything? Well, you? that's Darren DeVivo from WFUV, WFUV.org. Uh, he's on uh, 10 to 2 a.m. 10, 10, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Monday to Thursday, uh, midnight to 2 a.m. Sunday night, which is technically Monday morning, and uh, all week, almost all weekend on our HD2 channel, uh, including right now while we're taping this, I think I'm on the air right now. So, uh, this is a one time. And uh, I'm Rob Leonard, host of Beatles Songs every Friday on WHPC, uh, Garden City, New York, streaming at ncc.edu slash whpc free for all every Sunday 10 a.m. to 12 noon <laughs> so anyway uh, okay. we're here at the fest enjoying ourselves have a good time guys and thanks a lot good panel like, okay. like it. take thanks, care guys thing together in no time and then he said, geez, now I gotta write a melody when, when we were young and you know, like right out of his head came this beautiful melody and then we were all enamored by reggae music so it got to this little middle beat because there was a lot of Jamaican things in that movie and uh, we, we just loved reggae music at the time so I said, what does it happen? And he thought of a line and we said, well, oh, reggae, boom, chick, 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 boom, and pretty soon... That song was written 
Well, 10 to 30 minutes. I mean, it was that quick. Yeah, no, it was, Paul just knocked, it was in his head probably, but it was written very quickly and we broke out our instruments and started playing. Everybody kind of got a part for it. And then he said, all right, see you guys later. And uh, gave it to uh, George Martin, showed him what we were gonna do. George wrote, wrote the orchestra thing like a week later, we're in the studio and we have a 40 piece orchestra in a room maybe this size. And we were in the same room together. It wasn't all overdubs. And I don't think we did more than five takes. Nope, five takes, yeah, that was about it. And uh, they just wanted to make sure the notes were right for the violins and all of this stuff. And, and Ray Cooper was in the back. He had some timpani, da 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 boom you know, I never knew if that was Ray or Morris. Yeah, right. Right. I thought it, was it right. might have been Morris Pert. But we we came into the studio, George's studio, and three hours <laughs> later we walked out with a finished product, mix, vocals, and a few overdubs. Three hours. Wow, As Bill Price smoked a pack of cigarettes and a half in three hours. That doesn't surprise me. Nice thing. Oh, wow. What was your favorite? All of them. No, that's just, I can't really, the only thing I mentioned earlier was I was surprised when I, I don't really revisit the record very often and I find it very hard to listen to and enjoy anything I played on because I can't get past my own, critiquing my, yeah, yeah. you know, Drums critiquing my own performances. Yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes it's years before I can actually just kind of listen and go, oh, that's all right. And I had an experience recently with, uh, uh, my favorite song really on that is for, just in terms of the restraint that I managed was um, how, how many million miles in it after the ball really into that that whole sequence. I love that little part of the record, and uh, you know um, after the ball, yes, back. talk about being back. Yeah. And I was 25, yeah, and I was like a week between back. <laughs> <days, right? laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I heard somebody say you could walk with Ray Charles. You could walk from one side of the stage to the other <laughs> before you heard the next. Yeah, day. <laughs> and, um, yeah. So. I don't know, I like, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for that stuff. I love the deep emotional back in, and I love the big brash, I love it all. That's the, you know, I was just like, couldn't believe I was there till it was all his fault. But, uh, you know. But isn't that the truth that the test of a great drummer is to be able to play really slow? Yeah, well, it's easy to be flash and bra in a sense. I mean, it's not easy to be incredible. I mean, right. and that's the truth is that there's so many drummers that can wipe the floor, but if you can sit down and just listen to the song and just, you know, just get into the pocket of it. So many drummers don't do that. They're just like, no, 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 jump out the town. I get nervous, I have to leave. I'm out of home, I'll tell you, hi. Beatle fans, tell us, what was the name of the 1973 single that George produced for Paul McCartney and Wings? Joe? Live and let die. Live and let die, absolutely correct. Joe moving on to a 10 point lead. Very nice. Okay. You guys want to do one of my favorite questions? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm kind of scared though. Don't be. Swear to God you don't have to be. It's just a really cool question. Okay? You guys familiar with the Something New album? Remember yeah, that, one? that one? You know it, right? Picture it. Okay. You got it, Mark? Yeah. Okay. There's a picture of the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan no. show. I know the answer. You do? Okay. What's the third song on something new? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know. <laughs> Let's reset the board. Oh, no, wait a minute. I know it. Let, I know where you thought you were going. Okay, everybody. I'm here at the Best for Beatles fans with none other than Ken Michaels. And uh, I remember watching his, listening to his show uh, from uh, the Jersey days on DHA. Wow. And, uh, boy, I won all, some prizes there with that great montage of solo songs, which uh, the reason I like you so much is because you appreciate the solo material, right. as you said in a panel today. Uh, even uh, some, Somehow even more it appeals to you as you got older and collecting. Well, I think the Beatles as solo artists really matured. Absolutely. You know, there's no doubt about how great they were as a band. I think everybody knows that. But there's so much to explore about them individually. There's so much great music that they've done and that Paul and Ringo are still doing. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm always telling people, you know, there's stuff like on, just say, Flaming Pie. Right. That's just 
just as good as it could have been on Revolver. Something like some days I could hear on a Revolver. Or... Well, you know, you're, you're speaking my language here because I've often said if you take a song like um, Some Days or, or Calico Skies and, and it was on the White Album, everybody would, you know, it. Everybody would know it and everybody would love it. Yeah. yeah. I got a friend like that. He's like, listen to it. Listen to Little Willow. I mean, you know, right. listen to this stuff. Well, Jenny Wren like, sounds a little like Blackbird. Jenny Wren is, you know is a I mean? masterpiece. Like that. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, I just want people to know where they can watch you, listen to your podcast and things, if you don't mind. Well, I have two different shows. I have Every Little Thing, which is very similar to the show as it used to be in New Jersey when it was the All Request Beatles show. Every Little Thing, um, if you go to my website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com, there's a page for it, which lists, I now have 25 stations that carry the show, and when they're broadcast, you can stream them. But there's also another website called Global Texan Chronicles, and they're based out of Germany, and you can stream my syndicated show, just about all the archive shows there, whenever you want. So that's more on demand there. And then I have Things We Said Today, which is the talk show podcast, which I co-host with Al Sussman from Beatle Fan Magazine, who just moderated that panel that I, I just to that did. all the time. I just heard um, the one about the best solo uh, memories, like people that remember the solo careers. Right. You know, did you agree with us? Some things I did, some I didn't. Well, that's, uh, but, uh, that's what makes it great. That's know, it. Different, I, different I, of opinion. I always look, I'm always like talking back to the radio, oh, this is my opinion, you know. <laughs> Alan Cozen's in the show. He also yeah. writes for Beatle Fan. He used to write for the New York Times in their classical department. He's written a couple of Beatle books. Um, and Steve Marinucci, who is, you know, the number one Beatles news guy on the internet, who had Beatles Examiner and the Abbey Road site for Abbey a long Road time. Abbey Road site, which I am on. Yep, and now he writes for Billboard.com and Access, AXS.com. And we have a new show almost every single week. We're taking a week off this week to recover from this. <laughs> um, and the topics uh, vary from anything from the past, the present, and sometimes the future. So, uh, much, you know. much appreciated, Ken. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna go in this cloud. You don't mind me recording this for fun, do you? I have a channel I show. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, he's, a, he's a movie star. I'm a movie star, he says. What? Movie star? Hey, how about something free for the movie star? <laughs> What do I find here? Hey, Matt. All kinds of hats, but I already got one of these hats here. Oh, yeah. This one over here, real nice. Looks like Lennon from the Help era. And, you know, like is that, that Ringo's hat or Lennon's? Kind of a Ringo Helpish John Lennon. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just overwhelming. I mean, how, how do you choose? You know? and, and some of these shirts are good for the channel. You know, right. wear different shirts. And how do you pick one? How do you, how do you pick just thirty-two? That's what I want to know. How do you pick? You know, maybe I'll get forty-two today. I, don't I mean. But again, uh, you know, my wife wouldn't be too happy with that if I bought 40 shirts. Might not be able to pay the mortgage next month, but that's okay. Paul's grandfather. <laughs> We're very clean, right, at our age. Oh, no, absolutely. I'm very clean. Hey, I'm here with Mark Lapidos, who's uh, 
absolutely responsible for this wonderful time we're having here. Yeah, it's my doing, I guess. <laughs> and he's been doing this since 1974. Peace and love, Ringo, if you're watching this. Uh, come say hi sometime. Uh, we're having a great time. My girlfriend and I come here just about every year for a long time. And we love this setup here, this hotel. It's yes, yeah, a new hotel. The best. First 21st century hotel we used. High Regency, Jersey City, on the Hudson. Yeah. And it really, the, uh, the view... You can't yeah. beat the view. Right outside the windows, the Statue of Liberty, the World Trade Center, yeah. Empire State Building. You can see the George Washington Bridge, eight and a half miles away. Yeah. It's crystal clear. Yeah. And inside, we had the fest all weekend. Still going on today. If you hear this, it's what, Sunday. If you're in the area, come on down. Come we on have, down. We're going to have not just three members of Wings. We're having four. It's a and bonus. It's a surprise, too. Danny Lane. Danny right? Lane. Surprise last minute. But he will be coming back today and performing at night with his three former bandmates. And I'll be there for that. Me too. And remember, if you can't make it, try to make it. If you can't make it, it's always next year, every year. And it's also not just the New York metro area, but you also Chicago, have it in Chicago. August 11th through 13th. Absolutely right. So there you go. And Liverpool tonight will be performing side two of Sgt. Pepper. Side two of Pepper. And last night, they really nailed it, didn't they? Yep, yeah, they're great. It really was amazing, seriously. A, look for a splendid time is guaranteed for all. Thanks a lot, Thank Mark. Thank you. Peace really love, appreciate peace it. Love. Thank Peace you. and love. <laughs> Would you love okay, folks, I'm here with Howie Edelson and Stephen Bard of Fabcast. And we're at the Fest for Beatles fans, and uh, we're all having a great time. They're going to be uh, participating. I know Howie's doing a panel coming up. Uh, so what do you guys think about this year's Fest? I think it's great. It's the Fest. I think, you know, the more time that goes on, I find that the thing that I dig the most is watching the people sing and 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 congregate like that. For years, I, I didn't have any time for that. I was buying bootlegs. I was trying to, you know, pick up shit in the flea market. And now it's like... You have everything. That, that, I have everything. And now you just see kind of like what the core of this Yeah, but yet, do, do you have it on every kind of colored vinyl and everything? I'm, yeah, I'm, still, I'm yeah. still not all there yet, but I'm getting there. Uh, so anyway, why don't you guys, uh, you know, tell us uh, all about Fabcast and, you know, how people can tune in. Well, Fabcast is on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher, but I've never... Have you ever tried it on? So no. No. So I don't even... It's on Stitcher. I don't even know Sa how to SoundCloud's do it. really good. That, I think that's the best quality. SoundCloud.com, Fabcast. What, what we do is just intelligent adult Beatles talk. So what we're doing is we're not... It's not a, a history lesson. We're not going back and picking apart March 1962 and, you know, the releases and the mono mixes and stuff like that. We kind of talk about what it means and, and the bigger picture of what you get after you get the Beatles, where you go, where it takes you. Bard? Yeah, I think it's, we're just analyzing how we feel about the music and these four men. Their personalities have a lot to do their lives their lives their their motivations but it, goes, as, so, it goes beyond the music as artists it's based on the music and how we feel about the music but it's it's deep it's using the music to go deep into how we how, you know it's conjecture I mean the whole premise of our show is conjecture given that we you know we've never known these four guys but we know them through this music pretty well, and the mark of great artists is that you you do get a, a pretty good insight into an artist's soul through their work. And you're able to live your life yeah, as a reflection. Yeah, these lessons that are yeah. given to them, these clues. You know, the whole thing about Beatles is dropping clues. A clue to the new direction. You uh, know, this sounds, is how you sounds like hard find make. your mate. This right, is how right. you raise your children. The little things. It did, and our thing also is that you know it doesn't end in 1970 with McCartney's lawsuit. Like this thing is no, no. still going on, and it still went on, and their relationships still went on. It goes up till Ringo currently recording his new album with Paul in the studio recently playing on it so that's, it doesn't goes beyond 70 it goes to solo years goes four four different paths and uh, that's, that's how I look at it well guys I really appreciate you taking the time and continue to have a great time here at the fest for Beatles fans yeah everybody check them out yeah take care now so this one is 1964
Okay. A little piece of the Beatles performing at the Hollywood Bowl can be heard on what 1964 Capitol Records album? Joe? Uh, Beatles Story? The Beatles Story, that's right. They have a little bit of a twist and shout in there, right? Joe's on the board with five points. Okay, we're going to jump to the 70s, the golden age of Beatles solo stuff. <laughs> Sinatra was threatened by Elvis, and Elvis was threatened by the Beatles. And in 60 years, nobody's been threatened. No, no, and then the Beatles were threatened by Canuga, which is for a short period of time. It wasn't a very long period no, of time. It was a week. And I was threatened by the which is the baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, the other thing that Lawrence brought up to me, and it's a huge influence, especially to George, was Chet Atkins. The yes. guitar, great. And Lawrence, if you could lay a little bit of Chet on this, it would be great. First one, you'll see Denny Lane uses a thumb pick, and there was this guy Kennedy I Jones. Who was a nose picker? <laughs> <laughs> nice. First one, he yes. was a thumb pick, and one of his imitators was a man named Ike Everly, and his sons were the Everly brothers. So wow. there's kind of a certain wow. uh, kind of set of influences on that. Now, but, that but, but then Ike Everly also influenced Lord Travis and Chet Atkins, and that kind of that. Uh, that kind of like alternate bass thing, like really yeah. very fundamental to that. Okay, you know, you know, so speaking of the Everly Brothers, yes. I mean, you talk about how the, uh, in my opinion, some of the greatest Beatle harmonies came about. There's one song that uh, we, you want to start. Don't, don't, yeah, wow. Don't want your love anymore.
this set up the harmony tone that Lennon and McCartney ended up doing. So uh, in the key of E,
pretty great day at Beetlefest. <laughs>